our Final Cut Pro. Well, I thought it was about time that I dive in and do some kind of video tutorial, you know, share what tiny bit of knowledge I might have. They do say that uh, the best way to learn is to teach, so let's fall down that trap and see where we go with speed retiming, slow-mo, high speed. Uh, no, it's actually a good time. Final Cut is a lot of fun in this respect. So let's import a clip. Happen to have, oh, a 240 frame per second uh, iPhone video here. Perfect for fooling around with retiming. Let's add it to this particular event and get going. So why don't we create a new project and rant time it's just a timeline. I don't know why they went with this nomenclature. It's idiotic. But here we go. We'll create a new project and we will add our clip to this project. So um, in most cases, if you're new to Final Cut and you're just looking for this and you're wondering what is going on with this guy um, or this particular clip, because it's a 240 frame per second clip, well, normally your project or timeline would immediately be conformed to the format of the first clip. In this case, we're going to select it. And let's select a, a 24p timeline, 240 frame per second footage, 24p timeline. We can slow this piece of footage down to 10% while maintaining the smoothness of motion that we would expect. For the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna go past that, but let's one step at a time it. So let's select our timeline and select our clip and zoom it up. For the sake of this tutorial, I am just gonna disable the audio here. And you know what? Well, let's get rid of the scopes, we don't need those. While we're here, Let's just zoom up a bit and get rid of my friend who is hanging out here taking photos of the cyclists while I stick my nose in their business. And uh, that's good enough. Let's drop this out and let's clear up our entire display so that we can really focus on what we're here for, which is the retime editor. Command R on a selected clip and you are in business. Command R is actually pretty easy to remember because retime starts with an R. For the most part, Final Cut's key shortcuts are uh, memorable like that. Unlike another piece of software, <coughs> Okay, so your retime bar is going to allow you, as many of you know, but some of you don't, change the speed from of the clip. Sorry, slow motion, fast motion, there's some presets, move it back to normal and custom. So let's have a quick look for the sake of the tutorial, you know, for science. Um, fast, clip got quick, slow, clip got long, and really, we are going to start with it here. And today, we're going to split it up so that it's normal speed, slow, normal, and it transitions nicely between the speeds. Um, for those astute viewers um, who are not new to Final Cut but aren't really as familiar with this feature as they might like to be, you'll notice that this particular install of Final Cut is not rendering my clips when paused. I've done that on purpose, don't worry about it. I'm gonna use the Control R and Control Shift R keyboard shortcut repeatedly to render them. In your case, it might very well just background process the clips. While we're at it, to speed up our workflow, let's enable proxy mode and we are going to select the clip again and bring our retime bar back. Remember to turn it off proxy mode when you're going to export, because um, otherwise you'll be a sad, sad panda. So 
let's get to business. Let's have a look at this clip here. We have some cyclists coming by, and at some point we want to slow it down, and then at some point we want it to get back to be normal. And our goal is to emphasize the speed in both cases, that they're going really fast when we see it slow, but that they're also going fast. So let's have a look at the clip. Let's actually turn off snapping here by clicking on N. Perhaps not one of the most easy to remember keys, but essential nonetheless. Uh, and let's skim through here and, uh, okay. Yeah, I might wanna slow it down there. And so what we can do here is hit Shift B. So when you think of um, cutting or splicing in Final Cut, you think of B for the blade tool. Shift B will create a nice little cut on your retime editor bar. And then we can modify the speed of these two sections independently. And let's keep going here and uh, skim through. Still a big pack. And let's say right about here maybe, yeah, before it thins out, let's make another little um, splice in our retime bar. So we're gonna have normal speed, slow, um, slow speed, slow-mo from our overcranked footage here, and then back to normal for the end. So let's make it pretty slow. Let's put it at 10%. This way we're still using real frames. Um, oops. And uh, let's select our footage and zoom it in. So let's have a look. Okay, that's, that's decent. It's not great, but it's decent. I'm getting the slow-mo we want. It's got what plants crave. Um, and then we should head back to regular speed. Okay, so let's do some touching up and let's use this touching up to play with the fine sort of nuanced features here. So here, between the, these two speeds, we have our transition. So this is the ramp going from 100% to 10%. And here in the middle, we have the control, and this is often where a lot of people get confused. We have a control that will change the speed of the clip to the left. So if I play with this, because I don't like where the center of the transition is, I'm gonna have a bad time because in front of me, it's gonna speed up in front of me being on my left and behind me, it is going to slow down. And neither of those things are what we might initially want. What we might want is to change the center of this transition. So we can do that by double clicking here and clicking edit for the source frame. And so if our goal is that when this fellow in the kind of semi-razzle-dazzle white and black kit comes into frame, we wanted him to be going slow there. So we're going to move this source frame back and then adjust this transition, the end of our transition, so that by the time he is properly in frame, the, speed, the clip is at its slow speed. It has reached the end of its ramp. And because it's a little more dramatic, let's have it happen a little more quickly. So I think we're done with that. We'll double click that and let's have a look. Okay, that's pretty good. It's just a slight bit of like the, the slowdown is too smooth. So let's, let's actually have it happen a little more quickly. It's pretty good. You know, it could be a little more extreme, but uh, that's good enough for now. We have these guys cycle along, enjoy watching them suffer at probably 40 kilometers an hour or more. They sometimes hit 50 after this corner and uh, off they go. And, and that, that departure back to regular time, to real time is not very nice. So let's make it happen really fast so that we get that feeling of rushing by after the dramatic slowness. 
Mm-mm-mm, still not perfect. So re- really quick. Um, and I think the other thing we're going to do is we're going to slow it down even more so that it's really dramatic before they, yeah, before they hit there. So let's, let's slow it down by another 30% from here. So let's, um, let's go to 7% speed. I think that that's where we want to be. And, uh, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, that's good. So now let's talk a little bit about frame interpolation, the subject you've all been waiting for. So um, what Final Cut is doing here in the normal retiming mode, its default mode, is to simply, um, in this case where we're slowing footage down, to play frames for a longer period of time. That is, um, if you look closely, you can see that the image is no longer smooth at this point. There's a little tiny bit of stuttering as it plays and holds, plays and holds each frame to make artificial slow motion. Now you might want this effect, but maybe what you're going after is a really smooth slow motion. Well, we've got a tool for that. And here in the retime menu, something which if you do a lot of this, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with is this video quality sub menu. And there are three options, normal, what we're doing now, frame blending, which is exactly what it sounds like where frames are matched together to create missing frames. It doesn't do such a nice job. Um, uh, I don't find it much better often than this um, and sometimes more distracting because there can be ghosting and then there is optical flow which we're going to use and so i'm going to turn it on here and i'm going to rant so optical flow will analyze your footage for dominant motion um, and then it will be able to create in between frames for you optical flow was ripped and here i'm going to turn on our um, background task window so we can see how much time we have left. Uh, optical flow, Apple ripped from the heart of Shake, which they bought and then sort of gangsterized by stripping it for parts and putting it into applications like Motion and Final Cut. That wasn't so bad, but if you ever got a chance to play with Shake and use it for node based compositing, it was a truly wonderful application and moving to something like After Effects after that, which was the only affordable alternative at the time, uh, was a real pain. And I think many people just hung on to Shake for as long as they could keep it running on their systems. Anyway, um, let's twiddle our thumbs. And oddly, it's appropriate that in a video about retiming footage, I'm going to retime it so that we can get through this optical flow analysis more quickly. All right, now that that's done, let's go back to optimized original. Let's make sure we're in better quality and let's um, bring up our retime editor just so that we can remember what we did. Let's render this particular piece of footage um, now that we have the optical flow version um, and take a look. So yeah, so there we go. We had a nice little ramp. Now we're trucking along at seven seven percent of the original clips speed. Um, again, this is we're only possible. It's only possibly possible to be down at seven percent because the original clip was two hundred and forty frames per second, and now we're just pretending that we are getting closer to having a phantom one day. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's review um, the essentials. Command R for your retime bar. Shift B to create splices in the retime bar that will allow you to transition 
between speeds. This gray area is the speed ramp and double clicking on the little vertical bar here um, at the center of the speed transition will allow you to choose where that transition occurs but not affect the speed of the sections before or after it, which is probably the most common thing I hear. That's it for speed ramping. I hope this wasn't too painful and that if I ever get around to making another tutorial, it would be something worth watching. If not, tough. If so, hey, see you soon.